It was this night three years ago that Tim Bosma disappeared. And this year, the anniversary comes as the two men accused of taking his life are on trial for murder. Shannon Martin has been covering the trial in Hamilton. She joins me in studio now. And Shannon, it's been tough for the Bosma family from the day Tim disappeared, but this year has to be especially difficult. Yeah, especially brutal for sure. And to think it began like any other night three years ago, the Bosma family sat down for dinner. Tim put his daughter to bed. Then later, two men interested in buying his truck showed up for a test drive, and that is the last time his wife saw him. As spring blooms in Ancaster, residents of the close-knit community can't help but think of Tim. Ancaster is a small town and people come together and, and when something like this happens in our little cozy kind of hamlet of the world, you kind of think, oh my God, what's wrong with people? It was just a truck, one Bosma wanted to sell to make a little extra money for his young family. Tim, like countless others, posted an ad online. And three years ago tonight, 9.20 p.m., two men walked up his front driveway for a test drive. Tim didn't want to go. It didn't feel right. It was late. His wife, Charlene, broke down on the stand as she told the jury she insisted he went to make sure they got their truck back. The Crown's theory, within minutes, just a few kilometers from home, Bosma was shot at close range. Not long after, his body was believed to be burned inside an animal incinerator. You don't need him, but I do. And our daughter needs her daddy back. Well, the Bosmas pleaded for Tim to come home. 58 bone fragments and ash believed to be his sat at the bottom of a piece of farm machinery, eventually recovered by police confirming Tim was gone forever. This will never really be over for us. As a family, with our friends and our community, we will remember Tim. And his daughter will grow up knowing how much he loved her. Three years later, Ancaster and the Bosma's church community remains a steadfast source of strength, especially now as the trial into Tim's murder stretches into its fourth month. This past couple of weeks, the testimony has been very hard because Tim's name wasn't even mentioned. And, and one thing that they've been trying to do throughout this entire trial is to keep the memory of Tim's life alive. And so on the anniversary of his death, the Bosma's pastor will offer a special prayer. And Dwight, we did reach out to the Bosma family and all their supporters, but they're choosing not to talk to media at this time. Obviously, the case at this point, they don't want to jeopardize anything, but they are planning to honor, obviously, Tim's memory in private tonight. Yeah, and we will respect that, mm -hmm. of course. What happens yeah. next, though, in the trial itself? Well, Christina Nuga, Millard's girlfriend, she's believed to be the Crown's final witness. Uh, we should find out next week if the Crown will officially close its case and whether the defence will present any witnesses. A lot of people have been asking us, will we see Millard and Smitch take the stand? We don't know yet if that'll happen. But if they do, you will be there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome.